In this short video, I'm going to talk about pressure gauges. Specifically, I'm going to talk about how we can make sure that the numbers, that the readings that we read off of a pressure gauge like this, which is a Bordon gauge, are accurate and how we can calibrate a pressure gauge like this. Before we get started, I want to introduce different parts of this apparatus that I have over here. Right in front of me, I have a Bordon gauge that measures pressure in units of kilonewton per squared meters from zero all the way to 200. This pressure gauge is connected to a cylinder that I have filled up with water through a tube that you can see right over here. There is another tube connected to the top of the cylinder that is for the purpose of getting the excess water and dumping it to a drain. Right next to the cylinder on the plate, there is a spirit level to make sure that the apparatus is leveled. The process that we are going to do is called dead weight calibration. Why? Let me explain to you. So in my hand, I have a piston and there's a platform over here. I am going to insert this piston inside the cylinder that is filled with water and also make sure that when you pour water over here, open up these valves to get rid of all the air bubbles. Those air bubbles are gonna impact your pressure readings. So I've already done that. There are no air bubbles inside this. So once I put the piston inside the cylinder, because of the pressure that it applies over here, the pressure gauge is going to read a number. And then I'm going to incrementally add weights on top of the platform over here and measure the reading or read the number off of the pressure gauge. That would be my readings. Also, I can theoretically calculate the amount of pressure that these weights apply on top of my platform and in this um, cylinder and the piston, right? If I compare the theoretical value of pressure to the reading, that tells me how accurate the pressure gauge is. This was a general explanation of this apparatus over here, which is F111 from Armfield. Now I'm gonna show you how we can do this experiment and uh, show you the steps uh, right over here. All right, on the screen, you can see the device specifications. These are gonna be useful when we are doing the calculations and analysis later on in our spreadsheet. And I will show you how you can calculate different parameters using the, these specifications. Let me tell you the steps that we need to take. First of all, I'm going to insert this piston in the cylinder. So I'm gonna slowly lower it down. And one way to make sure that you have correctly installed this piston is that you should be able to spin this freely. If you can spin it freely, that means that this has been installed correctly. As you can observe on the pressure gauge, as I placed the piston inside the cylinder, the pressure increased. So I'm gonna note down the mass of the piston, which is 0.5 kilograms, and also the pressure readings from my Bordon gauge. Next, I'm going to add weights on top of the platform on the piston. So since the piston was already half a kilogram, I'm gonna add another half a kilogram, so the cumulative weight is one kilogram. Next, I'm going to repeat this process for all the other weights that I have. This was the process of loading. Now I'm gonna remove weights one by one and that process is called unloading. We have successfully completed this experiment. Now we are ready to take this table into a spreadsheet and analyze the pressure data. Okay, I am out of the lab. I have written the two columns that I collected used in the experiment. The green part is loading and the yellow part is unloading for mass and pressure. In addition to these two columns, you need to create three more columns in your spreadsheet, cylinder pressure, which is going to be calculated using this familiar equation. Pressure is equal to force divided by area. And I have given you the cross-sectional area of the piston, absolute error, and eventually error percentage. All right, let's calculate cylinder pressure. 
this is your theoretical pressure so you are going to find this value based on the weights that you applied on top of the piston so um, force that is applied on top of the piston piston is uh, weight and weight is equal to mass times g so mass that i have for the first row is going to be this value and times g is 9.81 we are using si units divided by area area of the piston okay so area is given to you right over here i'm going to write it 244.8 times 10 to the power negative 6. another way of writing 10 to the power negative 6 is this expression power 10 to the power negative 6. this is another way of writing that okay now notice that this equation gives you the value of pressure in newton divided by meters squared but we want it to be kilonewton divided by meters squared to match the, our readings so what i'm going to do over here i'm going to divide this the entire thing by 1000 to get kilonewton essentially so i'm going to divide it by 1000 and then press enter okay so this is the value the theoretical value of um, pressure when i applied the mass of um, half a kilogram and you can see the reading was 19 the calculated version the theoretical version is 20 so it's not way off i'm going to actually click on this to decrease the decimal digits after decimal point only to two all right the only thing that I need to do is drag this corner so all the other numbers are calculated for me. Okay, next I need to calculate the absolute error. And the absolute error is gauge reading. First, we need to write ABS, so we're calculating absolute difference. Gauge reading minus the theoretical value of pressure or cylinder pressure. So this would be the absolute error between these two numbers which is one kilo about one kilonewton um divided by meters squared again i'm going to decrease the number of decimal digits only to two and then drag this down so i have all the absolute errors over here and finally i need to calculate error percentage so this will give you the error in your um, gauge in your Bourdon gauge and the way to calculate that since we are going to calculate percentage I'm going to have 100 times in the numerator I am going to have the absolute error and in the denominator I am going to have the value of theoretical pressure or cylinder pressure and press enter uh, reduce the number of decimal digits after decimal points to only two and drag this down and this would be the error percentage you can see the highest error that i have uh, my device has experienced was 12.66 and the lowest error that experienced was this number over here which is uh, 0.18 okay now we want to see um create some graphs right and interpret this data into graphs as well all right next i'm going to show you a graph that shows you mass versus the absolute error in your gauge. So I'm gonna insert, I have selected these two columns and I'm gonna insert this graph over here. Okay, so as you can see, well, for each mass, we have two readings. So this is 0 0.5 and this is 0 0.5, one and one, because we did loading and unloading. So for each mass, we have two readings except for five kilograms because we had only one reading for five kilograms, right? So let me add the X titles and Y titles. This would be mass in kilogram. And this is absolute error. Okay, so as you can see, as we increase the mass, the absolute error is also increased. The gap between the absolute error for these two readings and these two readings are smaller than these readings over here. So this is one way of interpreting your result. I'm gonna put this over here. 
Another way of interpreting your result is uh, go through loading and unloading. Okay, so I'm going to select only the loading portion of the mass and only the errors for that portion. And then again, create another graph over here. So you can see again, the error percentage, this is the error percentage for loading. On the x-axis you have mass, on the y-axis you have percent error. You can see that your highest error is for when the mass is one kilogram and then the error goes down. Now let's do the same thing for unloading portion of our experiment, which is this portion. So if I repeat this and add another scatter graph over here, you can see that and I'm going to change the chart title to error percentage for unloading. Okay, here you can see that the smallest weight, which was 0 0.5, has the smallest error percentage. And as the weights are increased, the error percentage was increased as well. Okay, so this analysis gives you a lot of good information about your gauge and what is the average um, error percentage of your gauge and how accurately your gauge represents the data. So if I want to calculate the um, average error percentage of the gauge that I worked with, I'm going to take an average of these numbers and I can report that my gauge is going to have an average 5.75% error when it reads the pressure data. All right, so in this video, I showed you how you can calibrate and find the error percentage of a gauge, specifically a Bordon gauge that we worked on. If you liked the video, please subscribe and give this video a like.